Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time I'm going to try and turn my little tablet oscilloscope into a tachometer. Uh, the reason for that is I've got this DC motor which I recovered from a, a video recorder and I, I want to try and find out, um, there's, there's very little information on it and I want to try and find out uh, uh, what sort of speed it runs, how much current it consumes for, for various voltages. What, what I do know is that uh, it, it's a DC motor. So let's start by taking a closer look at it. So here's the motor in question then. I actually recovered it from a, I think it was an older VHS video recorder and it's got a, a worm gear here and that reduces the speed uh, quite considerably. And what's quite handy about the motor is that it's actually a snap fit in there so it comes out quite easily. It is a I've established it's a DC motor but that's about as much as I know those numbers are a bit um, inconclusive well they are to me anyway um, there's a couple of ways to mount it there are a couple of threaded holes at the end there which I could probably concoct something but what I'm rather hoping is that um, it's actually possible to to snap the motor back in the wrong way around here like that so I'm rather hoping I can just find a way to mount that um, like that and then I can just uh, come up with something here to um, make measurements of the motor speed. So what I'm hoping to do is a um, few videos back, I'll put a link above to the video in question, uh, I made use of this device which is something else I recovered a few years ago, it's an infrared photodiode and um, a photo transistor and I was using them to, uh, I was actually using it like an optocoupler. Now, this was never designed to be an optocoupler. It was designed originally to um, detect um, movement between the, in that, that, let me put it down there so you can see it. So in that, in that slot there, there's the beam of infrared light goes across to the transistor. And if I put something into, to cut off that light um, that should be detectable and I think in the device it was being used to detect how far something had moved across uh, um, and again that was being driven by a motor so what I'm going to try and do here is rig this up somehow so that I can uh, get something that rotates on this motor shaft and I can record the um, the passing of something across those sensors so I'm going to um, dream something up and then uh, by the magic of filmmaking, in a few moments, hopefully you'll see what I've uh, what I've dreamt up. Okay, I've mounted the managed to mount the motor using its original housing on uh, just a little bit of plywood, and I've been able to turn the motor round in this little clippy connection, so I can actually hold it um, quite securely there, which is good. Um, I've cut out a 50 millimeter diameter disc of um, a bit of polycarbonate sheet and drilled it to slightly under the size of that shaft and then just uh, carefully filed it out until it was a push fit and I've just put a, a little dab of glue behind it just to, to keep it there it'll easily come off again uh, and the opto coupler that um, I spoke about before I've got it uh, just screwed down here so as you can see the uh, edge of the disc uh, is running through the, um, the the gap in the opto coupler. Just uh, turn it sideways so you can see it there. And I've then painted a quarter of the disc with some uh, with some black paint. So uh, if you're wondering why I've painted a quarter, um, there isn't a good reason. I just thought, well, I'll paint a quarter, and if that doesn't work, I'll I'll paint some more just to see. So let's now have a look at the, the circuit. This is the um, infrared LED here and the phototransistor is the other side and I've got the ability to um, uh, vary the voltage on the motor. So let's now have a look at the, at the circuit which I've got um, arranged here on the breadboard and how we're going to take the measurements. Here's the circuit then, very simple indeed. Um, and it's a circuit of two halves in one sense um, and one connection is of course made via light. So on the left hand side we've got the infrared LED and I've got a 1k resistor to act as current limiting there, stop 
uh, stop it from running away and destroying itself. And on the right hand side we've got the NPN photo transistor with a 10k resistor in the collector just to again give it a little bit of uh, protection from uh, overcurrent. And the plan is to switch on which will mean that light from the LED will fall on the uh, transistor and uh, you may recall if you've watched the video on um, Opto Electronics that the mode of operation of the photo transistor is such that there's no base connection but when photons from the LED fall on the base of the transistor they, they hit the crystal lattice and become electrons and they form the base current so that would switch the transistor on. Um, so the plan is to put a voltmeter across the emitter collector and what we hopefully expect to see is when the uh, transistor is on, when the light is getting through to it, we expect to see a reasonably low voltage across the transistor but when the light is blocked, hopefully by my little uh, arrangement, um, the voltage should go higher and we'll first of all check that out to make sure it does work on the voltmeter and then we'll attach it to oscilloscope which hopefully is going to show us um, how many times a second uh, the uh, spindle of the motor is rotating. Before we start um, uh, actually running the motor let's just verify we've got uh, correct operation. So I've now got the infrared LED powered up with a, a 1k resistor there and I've got the voltmeter um, of this analog meter uh, connected across the uh, photo transistor so we can measure the voltage of the photo transistor so I'll just apply power and with the disc uh, in the position where there's a clear view so in other words we've got conduction there um, the voltage across there well it doesn't matter what the voltage is but it's the, it's the change that we're interested in but that, that's on the two and a half volt DC range and um, so it's just about just over one uh, just get my head around the scale here yeah it's about three quarters of a volt so I'm now going to just rotate this disc until we go into the shaded portion of the disc and we'll keep your eye on the needle we'll see what happens and yep there's a pronounced change in voltage that's good um, and it stays there until we come out of that and it drops back down so voltage change and returns very quickly um, to the other one. So the next step now is to just reconfigure that and get the scope attached and then we'll, uh, we'll take some measurements. So what I've done now is replace the analog voltmeter with the, the scope. Uh, powers on to the circuit so uh, currently it's showing the voltage there uh, as I've got it in AC coupling so it's just going to sit on, on one. Um, so I'll just move the disc into the darkened area and as you can see there's a bearing in mind we're in AC coupling if I just momentarily pop that onto DC coupling it's quite a good little tutorial of the difference actually so that's with the disc clear and that's darkness shoots off the top right to the top there clear so you can see the DC coupling and if we put it back into AC coupling which is just easier it comes back down to the, the zero line there and when we move it you'll see it hops up but very quickly the scope um, does its AC coupling thing and brings it back to zero so yeah that that's verifies operation so I've got the um, power supply set to about two volts so let's now switch it on pardon the beep and there we go good well that's excellent so what can we see so here's the when the voltage is high that's the black portion uh, and remember I uh, darkened about a quarter of the disc so as you can e expect we've got more low than high but that doesn't matter we can see a pulse so at I'm just going to use the fine control here to get to exactly 2 volts so at 2 volts it's drawing 1.2 milliamps and got the scope set to calculate the frequency there so we've got 13 hertz so it should be a simple job then to 
13 times 60 seconds gives us 780 so the motor at 2 volts is doing 780 revolutions per minute so I'm going to just do a little table really so we'll now increase the voltage to 3 volts as closely as I can ok there's 3 volts and we're now at 18 hertz if your mental maths is better than mine then you already know the answer that's uh, 1080 rpm and I'm going to uh, still draw in about um, yeah about 12 milliamps so that, that's good really so I'll go up to 4 volts ok there's 4 volts and it's um, 26 hertz which comes out at 1560 rpm uh, so we'll go up to 5 volts and we're now at 32 hertz which is 1920 rpm just going to tap the time base here just to see a bit more of a, a waveform on the screen now we've got to 6 volts ok that's 6 volts it's drawing about 39 milliamps now and we've got 42 hertz there and of course that's the answer to life the universe and everything and that's 2520 uh, rpm so we'll just continue up to about 9 volts I think that'll do for my requirements um, there's 7 volts 39 milliamps and 49 hertz so 2940 revolutions per minute and we'll continue up now to 8 volts it's getting a bit excited now from the noise there's 8 volts um, 48 milliamps now and we're at um, 57 hertz according to the scope so that's 3420 rpm and I'm happy just to go up to 9 volts I'm probably not going to use it it's any more than 9 volts in this little application I've got uh, that's 9 volts um, 48 milliamps and 64 hertz With, if I just get the uh, maths right it would be good 64 hertz is 3840 rpm so I'm just going to go back down now to about 5 volts yep, there's, there's 5 volts and um, as you can see a little bit of a spike here in fact if you look carefully there's actually two and um, I just thought that was noise and didn't think very much of it but when I've looked a little bit more closely um, I was quite surprised at what was causing that so if I drop back down let's just go down to 3 volts so we can see it a little bit better and if I just um, turn up the volts per division it's going to let me do that so I've got two, two definite spikes there I think that's just my rough paint edge there to be quite honest that, that bit there but there we've got those two spikes so what is it well if I turn off the power um, and move it to there you can see there's a bit of a change there I'm just going to go to DC coupling just to hopefully emphasize that a little bit but just there yeah, you can't see it terribly well but um, I just drag that down a bit um, you can see a blip there yeah now I doubt you can see this so I'll just show you a close-up photograph but there is a little scratch on the disc there from my poor cutting out uh, practices I'll, I'll take a close-up so you can see the scratch but I thought wow that's absolutely amazing that the photo cell is actually managing to um, record that so let's just do a little test so either side of it now I'm just going to put a little black line with my sharpie pen 
and see if we get two spikes either side of it then we'll know we're right and let's now go back to um, AC coupling just to make life a bit easier now that's interesting isn't it the the two dark lines aren't making much of an impression but the scratch which clearly completely deflects the uh, the light beams because I guess it's acting like a bit of a, a prism almost because it's a cut in the surface of the polycarbonate is actually showing up but the two black lines don't um, so there we go a little bit surprised at that but I'm also quite impressed that the photo cell will actually detect those two little cracks it's um, it's quite remarkably sensible so it's not showing up my two little lines which do definitely go through the um, zone. Let me just think I might have a thicker pen um, that I could put. Yeah, this is a thicker pen. Let's see if I can just make those lines a little thicker. It's not particularly black. You can probably see those, those two lines there now, there and there. Let's switch that back on and see what happens. Yeah, there we go. With the thicker pen there's the original two spikes and we've actually got the two lines showing up there but interestingly the almost dark sharpie pen is producing that spike there but the completely complete deflection of the of the light beam must be going on in those two little scratches so there we go it's remarkably sensitive and i've also now discovered um uh, the the speed and current draw range of my little motor so i can now think about how i want to apply that I've taken the results from the motor and plotted them on a graph. So what you see in here is volts versus revolutions per minute. And I think the first thing to note is that there's clearly a linear relationship with uh, speed and volts, certainly from 2 volts up to 9 volts. How far that would continue, we don't know. But um, that's certainly as fast as I'm likely to want the motor to run. OK, well, I hope that's been interesting. Um, it's been helpful to me because I've found out uh, plenty about my little motor, which I can now uh, hopefully uh, repurpose for a new application. And I think my little um, polycarbonate disc idea worked quite well. Um, and it also allowed us to um, see a nice little um, application of uh, an oscilloscope. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, please click the thumbs up. If not, you can click the thumbs down. Always interested in comments, so you know, please do make comments. Uh, would also be great if you'd consider subscribing. That would really help me. It costs nothing, um, but it, it helps the channel. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.